Hi, Simon here from Gold Coast Solar Power Solutions and today we have a B&B &B solar inverter and um, I just want to run through with you a few things about the B&B &B inverter today and uh, first off I just want to run through the uh, startup and shutdown procedure if you have a look at the moment the inverter says on the grid and the power being produced is 112 watts and we've got a green light in from the solar panels to the solar inverter and a green light from the solar inverter to the grid or to your switchboard sort of thing so that, those two green lights should be on during the day and uh, there should not be a red light in here. If there's a red light in there, as it says there, it's an alarm and there's an issue with the system. Now the first thing I want to do is just uh, show you how to reboot the system. In case there is ever a problem with your B&B solar inverter, uh, it's always important that you uh, try and reboot the system and hopefully that will clear any glitch and you can get it working again. But what we'd always do is uh, follow the shutdown procedure, which is something like this. You turn off the solar supply main switch and AC isolator. Now the solar supply main switch is always located in your switchboard. The AC isolator will usually be installed beside the inverter, like right here. So we'll just throw that off. In reality, you can do either one or all, solar supply main switch or the AC isolator. If you even have an AC isolator, you may not. And you can see the, uh, the red alarm lights come up now and it's saying it's, the inverter's got a fault a fault, which is an off fault. Um, then we turn off the PV array isolator located next to the input terminals of the inverter. So that's over here in this case. So we're just going to throw that off and the system immediately goes blank. When, when it's, uh, when it's uh, turned off like this, just wait a few seconds and then try rebooting the system. With the reboot uh, procedure, it's nowhere near as critical as the shutdown procedure. You can turn off the DC or AC on first, doesn't really matter. As long as everything gets turned on, it's all fine. So we'll just throw on the DC here, and then on the AC on, and uh, it just goes through a startup procedure. So it's there, BNB power. Now, I'm not sure what BNB power stands for. Um, it could be blue and bodgy, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong. There we go, the BNB power grid tied solar inverter. And uh, the startup procedure for the inverter should normally take a couple of minutes. So if you have a look, if we have a look around here on the side of the screen, we've got the uh, data plate about the inverter here. So this model is an SF5000 TL. So it's telling us the five kilowatt mo model there. Number of MPP trackers, maximum power point trackers is two. And uh, this is interesting, the maximum DC power of each tracker is 3000 watts. So um, this means that the solar inverter has to have two sets of inputs, two sets of DC cables into the inverter for it to be running at full capacity. So uh, if we have a look around at the front of the inverter again, you can see this one's got the two, two cables into it. We've got a positive and a negative. But we've got another couple of uh, inputs here as well, another positive and negative, and, but only one's being used. So in this case, if this was hooked up to five kilowatts of panels and only one input was used, the maximum DC power of each track is only 3,000 watts. So it, can, it could only be producing 3,000 watts rather than getting to a full 5,000 watts. So it is important that both inputs of the inverter are used. And down here we've got the, the Pmax AC, which is 5,000 W, so five kilowatt rated. And uh, if you ever do have any problems with your BNB inverter and you need to try and make a warranty claim, um, all I can say to you is good luck. BNB um, aren't represented in Australia at all, so you're going to have to try deal with um, the Chinese. And so I hope you've been practicing your Mandarin. You might have to polish up a little bit. But you will need the serial number of the inverter, which is right here, which is always important. Now uh, let's just see how this inverter is going here. Oh, we've just come back online after that time. So you see the green light's gone constant there, the green light's gone constant there, and we're back in operation. Now we'll just read through this couple of different readouts on the inverter. First up, we've got the power. That's power being produced right now from the system. So 295 watts right now. Today, that's how much power has been produced in total today. Since the start up in the morning, that's how much power it's produced. After that, we've got the total. That's a bit like the odometer on your car. That's a, that's a reading which keeps on ticking up as how many kilowatt hours it's done. And at the bottom it just tells us the mode it's in at the moment. It's on grid, it's connected to the grid. So there we go. We, if we keep tapping on the screen, it goes through the different readouts. 
So here we got voltage from uh, from the grid. Here it's quite high, 261 volts. It's very very high. Um, unfortunately, we find in the Energex area of southeast Queensland it is quite often quite high, which leads to leaves lots of problems with solar panel systems. Then we got F grid, frequency of the grid, which should always be about 50 hertz. And then we got I out, that's the current being outputted from the inverter. Then underneath that we got the V bus, which is internal voltage of the of the bus inside the inverter. We tap on the screen again. This will give us a power chart of how it's produced during the day, um, which doesn't look too effective there. But on a, on a nice perfect day, if this system was working properly, it'll be bell curves, starting off with nothing, next to nothing in the morning, building up to about midday um, to its highest peak on a, on a nice sunny day, and then dropping off uh, till dark. Press it again, just gives them the sort of serial number of the inverter, the software version, and uh, settings of the inverter. Nothing too exciting there. And back to the main readout. Look, we haven't seen many of these B and B inverters around. They haven't been very popular in Australia, which uh, is probably a good thing in my opinion. Um, but look, if you're on the Gold Coast or South East Queensland area and you're having any problems with your B&B solar inverter and you need some help, don't hesitate to give Gold Coast Solar Power Solutions work a call. We're, we're happy to help in any way we can. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it's been helpful for you.